Right, so I've got a couple of minutes and I do like to go through the comments and see what's actually happening. And what we have here is um, I've got a comment from John146. Uh, strange name, but John is a regular contributor. He comments to the he comments on the channel an awful lot. Um, and John asks, why do you need to preheat when you've just been driving on the motorway? Well, this relates to a video I did and I showed uh, driving towards a charger. The preheating uh, preconditioning came on on my car. Uh, and it's a very good question because there's a lot of confusion about uh, preheating. Why do you need it? Should you use it? Uh, so John, let me just go back a little bit and go through it in uh, nice simple terms. The first thing is, uh, let's look at batteries. Batteries are just a big box with chemical reaction going on inside. If you attach a load to it, like a motor, headlight, or a windscreen wiper, it releases electricity. If you put electricity into it, it stores it. That's all it is. And anyone who knows anything about chemistry will know that all reactions, whatever they are, this is not just batteries, all reactions, proceed faster and more efficiently when they're nice and warm and slower and less efficiently, efficiently while they're cold. So that's all the battery is. It's just a store of electricity. You can put it in, you can take it out. Now, um, you have in your car something called a BMS, a battery management system. Up until recently, the battery was the most uh, expensive component in the whole of the car. Uh, it represented about a third of the total cost of building the car. That's dramatically decreased nowadays, but uh, it's still a hefty piece of equipment and a hefty price. So it's important to protect it and the manufacturer would like that battery to last as long as they possibly can. And to do that, they build in a battery management system and its sole job is to protect the battery from damage. So how can you damage it? Well, if the battery gets too hot, uh, it's a danger of uh, collapsing totally. It's a really bad thing. So they'll have a cooling system in there, a battery management system. Whether you're driving, whether you're parked, whether you're charging, battery management system will be watching it. And if it gets too hot, it will just switch the cooling system on. And all batteries nowadays have a cooling system. On the other hand, if it gets too cold, you can't pump a lot of electricity into it. It'll do a lot of damage. Uh, we saw this recently in Chicago. I'm gonna cover this one in a little bit more detail, uh, but we saw it in Chicago where it was at about minus 30 centigrade and uh, Fahrenheit, uh, it, it, they're the same at that sort of temperature. Uh, and at that temperature, the battery management system was not allowing the battery to charge uh, because by pumping in a powerful electrical current, uh, it could do serious damage to the battery. So what a battery has is an ideal temperature and that ideal temperature varies whether you're driving or charging. For charging, the battery likes to be a little bit warmer uh, so that you can get the power in much more quickly. When you're driving, it likes it to be a little bit cooler. Uh, not much, only about 10 degrees difference, but there is a difference. So when you're heading towards a charger, if you don't use your sat-nav and don't tell the car you're going to a charger, it doesn't know you're going to a charger. So it will arrive at the charger uh, without any uh, preheating. If on the other hand, I recommend everyone does this, you tell the car you set in your planner, uh, your route planner or your sat-nav, you tell it you're going to a charger, then what will happen is it will work out whether it needs it. Now, in the winter, it will always, always, always benefit from a preheating, always, without doubt. Uh, overnight, even in the UK, it can get down towards freezing. At the moment, it's really cold. It's only about five or six degrees centigrade. Batteries are really cold and they don't like taking a full fast charge, rapid charge, ultra rapid charge at that temperature. So if you are heading towards a charger, then the, the, the car, my, my Tesla automatically will switch on preconditioning and it will judge how long it's going to take me to get to the charger and it will turn the preconditioning on on the way so that when I get to the charger, it's at the correct temperature. Even in the summer, I see the preconditioning coming on. And don't forget, if the temperature is only 15 degrees or 18 degrees, that's quite a warm early summer temperature, uh, but it's not the ideal temperature for charging a battery. That's more like 30 degrees centigrade. So uh, even in the summer, this will come on. And don't forget in the winter, 
uh, you've got airflow going underneath the battery and that airflow is freezing cold. So that will be chilling your battery down while you're driving. So to go back to the original question, drive down a motorway, your battery doesn't get very warm. It, makes, it gets a little bit warm, but the airflow underneath will take that heat away. Uh, and so if you were to turn up at a charger with your battery that cold, uh, it will charge, but it will take longer. I saw this recently at Columpton Services. Uh, there was a Kia EV6 there and they couldn't precondition. The reason they couldn't, the battery had gone really low and when they tried to precondition they said you haven't got enough battery because it does use a bit of power. Come back to that in a minute. Um, so they couldn't precondition. They plugged into an Ionity 350 and when they first plugged in they were getting 23 kilowatts. Now this is a Kia EV6. These can charge at over 100 kilowatts uh, and they were getting 23. Uh, I was talking to the owner. As we stood there talking, you could see the, the, the charge starting to rise. Uh, and after about 20 minutes or so, that charge rate was up at 183 kilowatts. That shows really accurately the importance of temperature. Had they preconditioned, when they plugged in, it would have charged at 183 kilowatts or higher right from the get-go, right from the start. So preconditioning is there to get your battery into the right temperature range so it will charge efficiently. Why should we do it? Uh, you don't have to. If you want to pull up uh, at a charger and plug in and your battery's stone cold and you're happy to sit there with it taking only 20 kilowatts while it's running the battery heaters in the background getting it up to temperature, you suddenly realise that actually we run the heaters. I'm either buying that electricity off the charger I'm plugged into, or I'm using it from stuff I've already put into the battery. So your car is going to preheat the battery, whether you choose to do it on the way, or whether it does it automatically when you plug it in, it will preheat the battery. If you're not in a rush, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you're stopping for lunch, going uh, for an hour, Plug it in, it doesn't really matter how slow it charges because it will catch up eventually, the battery will warm up as it's charging, the heaters will come on as it's charging, and by the time you finish your lunch you'll probably have a full battery or whatever you want to get it to. So there is no need to precondition or preheat your battery. So why do it? Um, one of the problems people complain about is queues at chargers. So if you picture the scene, we're going to visit the same one in my car on two different occasions. It's winter, it's zero degrees, it feels it today, it's bitterly cold. Um, if I don't program into my route plan and my sat nav that I'm going to a charger, I will drive to a charger. Now my car was uh, stood outside overnight, it will, the battery will be near enough freezing and a short drive to a supercharger is not going to do anything at all. These batteries weigh well over half a tonne, some of them nearer a tonne, uh, and they take a lot of heating. So just turning your heating on for five minutes, absolutely useless. So let's tell you first example, I'm going to arrive at the charger with an absolutely stone cold battery. When I plug it in, if it's really cold, the battery management system will say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'll turn the heaters on and they will automatically turn the heater on. They will turn the heater on and when it gets up to a sensible temperature, that could take 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes, depending on how really cold it is. And when it gets up to a nice temperature, it will start allowing some of the power through to recharge your battery. In practical terms, it means that I could end up sitting there for an hour or an hour and a half trying to charge. The first half hour, an hour, is just warming up the battery. The second half hour uh, is actually the charging. So what I would be doing, I would be blocking that charger from anyone else being able to use it for the best part of an hour and a half. Now, let's take the other alternative. I actually program into it the uh, charging station I'm heading for, the supercharger, and I give it plenty of time. I'm an hour away and I program it in. So when I arrive, I'll see the preconditioning coming on. Uh, that will be on for probably half an hour before I get there, and I'm driving as well, so this is 
pouring heat into the battery. When I get there, my battery will be at the optimum temperature for charging. And when I plug it in, if I was driving something like a Model Y long range, it would go whizzing straight the way up to over 200 kilowatts and you can pump in 200 miles of range in about 15 minutes. You're gone. 15 minutes, 200 mile range, unplug, park, go and have your lunch. These are designed for speed. So why should you precondition? It reduces the time you will spend at a charger. If you are having a lunch, it's not so important. But if you are um, uh, on a road trip and you want to get on, on the route so you get to your hotel on time, spending an extra hour at a charger while it's warming the battery up is just a total waste of time and it blocks the charges for someone else. So what Tesla has been doing is that they've been working very, very hard to try and get the charging time down. And whereas an average charger, something like these uh, Osprey ones, so if we take um, Osprey chargers, these are 150 kilowatt, uh, the average time for an average EV to charge from say 10% up to 80% is about 45 minutes. If you go to a Tesla supercharger, the average time they take is under 20 minutes. And that's because Teslas will automatically precondition. They have a much faster uh, charge rate than some of the cars out there. They have a much faster uh, charging speed because the battery will be really warm when you get there. And Tesla's priority is to get you out of that charger as quickly as you can. They don't want you sitting there for an hour and a half while you go and have a lunch and you block up a charger. So this is the difference really between the, uh, the approach, the attitude, Tesla wants to do everything it can to reduce the time that you spend at a charger, make it a more pleasurable experience uh, and also a much cheaper experience. So to answer your question, John, if you want to spend an hour, hour and a half at a charger and you don't mind that, don't precondition. Don't rely on your car preconditioning its own battery without turning it on just by driving down a motorway, even if you drive for a couple of hours. Because don't forget, you've got that airflow underneath, which is aerodynamics, and that's taking away some of the heat that the battery's trying to build up. So driving down a motorway at uh, normal speeds will not warm your battery sufficiently to get to the temperature it likes for the maximum charging speed. And in the winter, you should definitely precondition, uh, and the best way of doing that is to preheat the car before you get in it, because preheating the car in most cases will also preheat the battery to some degree. One other question, what if it gets down to minus 30 and you plug it in at home to your AC charger, uh, it won't charge? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, the battery management system uh, will uh, allow through what is safe. And if you get a very low current coming in from your home battery charger, uh, and they are low uh, compared to these, uh, that's fine. Uh, that's not going to damage the battery in any way. So even at minus 30, had people left the cars outside the night before, plugged them in, they would have charged up overnight uh, anyway. Uh, the problem in Chicago, by the way, just to go back to that, was that people didn't have the ability to charge at home. So all the cars turning up at the Tesla charger had been left out overnight. By definition, if you've got a garage, you've got power there so you can charge it. If you can't charge your car, it means you can't park at home. So all these cars were turning up with a stone cold battery. They all of them needed about an hour to just get some heat back into the battery before it would start taking your power. And of course, if every single supercharger bay is taken up with a car waiting an hour to catch up uh, with the temperature, then you just build up massive queues and that's what it was. So my message to everyone is, I always use it. Uh, it takes a little bit of the range out of the car. You might lose five or 10 miles. That's it on a, on a long journey. But it means that you spend less time at the charger. And my typical time at a charger is around about 15, 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. Occasionally on a really long run, uh, I'll top it up a little bit more than that. And quite often I'll do a very much quicker one, maybe five or 10 minutes, uh, just as a top up to get me to the next stop, which is already pre-planned. Anyway, hope you find that interesting. I hope it helps you. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. 
you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.